What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another movie review. I'm Chase Lee, reviewing for DallasMovieScreenings.com, and the movie I want to take a look at right now is Centigrade. Now, this one comes from IFC Midnight, it is directed by Brendan Walsh, and this one tells the story of a married couple that find themselves trapped in their frozen vehicle after a blizzard and struggle to survive amid plunging temperatures and unforeseen obstacles. So that is your plot right there, and yes, it takes all in, it takes place all inside of a vehicle for the whole hour and 30 minute, eight minute runtime. So you know that pacing has to be correct for these types of films because it's really hard to pull off one location films. So going into this initially though, never saw a trailer, didn't know anything about it. Never read the plot description. I thought centigrade was like a reference to like a science fiction term. I don't know why I thought sci-fi, but it sounds like a science fiction futuristic you know, army or something of robots, like the centigrades are here. So like, I, I thought it was something else. Uh, but then when I read the plot description, uh, I was totally okay with it because one location shot survival films uh, is, it's one of my favorite subgenres. I absolutely love it. I get a kick out, out of them every single time. Um, you know, one of my favorite ones, just to give you guys context of kind of the ones I like, I do like films like Devil, where, like, you know, that one took place all inside of an elevator. That one was fun. But then I really like really good ones, like uh, Buried with Ryan Reynolds, where he's stuck in the coffin. There's just something about this genre that I'm so fascinated by because they have to work extra hard, like the, the crew, to make a film that doesn't feel slow, like it, it, you know, is entertaining, and just, like, being in one location is so hard to kind of manipulate with different shots, um, the story, the characters, and making sure it just it feels like a journey, even though you're stuck in this one location. It's super hard to do, and I think that's why uh, I'm so fascinated with this subgenre because I don't know how these people pull it off. So how is this one? I think it's good. Um, I I kind of want to watch it again, uh, and that's really rare for me for screeners nowadays. I... Uh, I kind of had the same feeling as I, like when I saw Buried, where I was just like, "Wow, that was pretty good." Okay, I, I I'll probably remember this in the next like year or so. Um, what, well, which which is weird because like when I uh, when I think of this movie, I won't call it centigrade. I'll probably call it oh yeah the the ice and snow trapped uh, couple in car movie because uh, centigrade is gonna be really weird for me to remember <laughs> just because like once again it sounds like science fiction. Anyways, I like this movie quite a bit. So. Let's start with director Brendan Walsh. So, Brendan has two jobs on this film. A director's job, first and foremost, is to get the best performances out of the actors, and we'll get to that in just a second. But for these types of films in particular, you need to have a well-paced story and overall product. Now, there is an editor on this film, and, you know, Brendan has to work with the editor and everything, but he has to take Brendan's notes and apply it to the best uh, that he can. And that's really tough to do. Because you're dealing with, like I said, minimal uh, lo location changes. Minimal uh, shot composition. It's really taking a bunch of footage like from this inside of a car. And constructing a great narrative out of it. I, once again, it blows my mind that editors can do this. But they can. And I thought they did a pretty great job with this. The atmosphere that Brendan creates and the editor creates, it's just really palpable with dread and just fear. And that threat is looming the entire time. And it's not just an inside the car type of threat either with the uh, rationing of food and water. It's the outside threat. Because in this film, these characters have a different point of view. The wife wants to bust down the window and climb or crawl through the ice and go find some help. Then the husband's like, no, listen, we don't know what's out there. It's like 40 degrees below zero. I'm not going out there and risking both of our lives. We need to stay in here where there's food and water. So with that conflicting um, kind of presentation of ideas, we actually kind of sit here as we're watching it, just like filled with just anxiety because they're both right it's just like you don't know what to do in this situation so watching this and seeing it kind of play out the dread is just amped up every single time and it's just delicate 
delicately. And so uh, I, I really liked the way this scene was kind of paced out. It just it gets worse and worse and worse. And you feel like there's no hope. But at the same time, you know there's a there's a small bit of hope that they will make it out of this alive. And so Brendan keeps that hope there, and the editor just ramps up the dread and the terror and uh, makes you feel uh, anxious the entire time. It's just, it's a really well put together movie. Uh, once again, they're super hard to do. I'm jealous. I want to make something like this, and watching stuff like this will definitely... Um, um, give me hope uh, to make a movie like this. But yeah, it's just, it blows my mind that um, a movie can be made in one location like this and feel uh, entertaining, um, heartfelt, threatening, uh, dramatic. It's a thriller as well. It's just really well handled. The performances. So the husband is played by Vincent Piazza, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, and the wife is being played by Genesis Rodriguez. Really great performances. Um... Just, like, you feel for these people. Um, not immediately, I would say. I, 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 as soon as they get, like, to some of the rationing of some of their supplies, I think that's when I started to feel from the most. Because, you know, they're trying their hardest to, like, figure out what to do. And, like, their options are very limited. And, you know, they're kind of pit in this corner. And you're kind of seeing them, like, struggle to survive. And you want them to make it out alive. Because at first they were kind of... Not a very likable couple, I'm going to be honest with you, but as it kept going, I just I really got into the story and into the characters and their headspace and how they were thinking and how they were going to escape the situation, and I was in it to win it, baby. And then by the end of it, I was like, wow, what a journey. But yeah, their performances were really well handled because they have to carry this movie. There's no other performances in this film. It's just these two people. They have to show love and warmth towards each other because they're married. They are also at uh, each other's throats because they're hiding a bunch of secrets. And so where are you going to go when you have an argument? You can't go anywhere. So you, he goes to the front seat. She'll go to the back seat. But, like, you can just feel that tension there. And, like, that tension and that, that suspense is just added on to the atmosphere of the overall threat that's happening. It just makes it even more of a, a worthwhile journey to see these people get through their struggles, get do what they need to do, and survive. Um, and then as the movie progresses, like, it gets super, super dark really, really quick. Um, you know, they lose their sanity at some points. Once again, you feel for them, um, but these actors have to sell it, and they have to really feel like they're losing their minds. And, like, um, I, I just, yeah, if you see the arc and the progression of their performances from the start to the end of the film... It is a 180 switch, and that's really tough to do. And I, I thought it was really convincing. So, yeah, it was a it was a good two um, a good co lead uh, performance uh, that carried the entire film. But they did a pretty great job. But that's pretty much it. Um, you know, there's really nothing more you can discuss uh, cinematography wise and on a visual front. Uh, anytime when they cut to the outskirts uh, of the car and like just the in you know, the landscaping and everything it was really harsh. It was, uh, you could feel the coldness of the snow and the ice and you can, you can, um, shiver every single time you hear the wind just like pass by in your sound system. It was a really, really, uh, terrible environment to be in and the wonderful, beautiful, um, kind of landscape shots really kind of set that, uh, that, uh, you know, in our minds, like this is a really cold experience, and you feel cold just watching the um, the wide shots of this film. And then everything inside of the car, it's you know, it's pretty basic stuff. There's a, there's a couple of cool uh, shots uh, for sure, but there's only so much you can get in that small amount of space. But yes, overall, I enjoyed this film quite a bit. I'm gonna give Centigrade a B. So. Let me know down below what you thought of this film, whether you loved it, whether you hated it. Please comment down below. Uh, even if I don't reply to all of them, I do read all of them. But I'm also slightly biased. I love these types of films. Um, I just, yeah, it's one of my favorite subgenres. But I do honestly think that if you're looking for a horror film, a thriller, a suspenseful film, a drama, I think this movie has it all. And uh, especially especially the thriller part. If you like these types of films, check this one out when it hits VOD this Friday, August 28th. I think you'll have a fun time with it. 
And especially and if you're a horror fan looking for something new as well, I think this one will also satisfy you. Even though it's not like super uh, violent or graphic or whatever, um, there is some stuff to uh, please a horror fan. But um, I still think it has a lot of like horrific elements to apply to that genre as well. But yes, uh, and then uh, yeah, that will do it for this review. If you're watching this on YouTube and you wanted to know any movie I review, um, it's a random schedule I have, but um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get up-to-dates on whenever I review anything. Uh, if you're more of a podcast person and you want these in audio form because you don't want to see my ugly mug, I don't blame you, you can uh, subscribe to the Real Me In Colon Movie Podcast feed on CastBox, excuse me, Spotify, Anchor. I'm all over the place. Just search Real Me In if you're more of a podcast person. But this review is done, but I will uh, uh, go ahead and wrap this up right now. I'm Chase Lee for DallasMovieScreenings.com, and tune in next time for whatever I review next. I will see you guys later.